The basketball team is planning a party. A slumber party to bare their souls. Mine? All the girls are coming, except Mary and Linda. <coughs> and they won't be missed. The party begins at 8 o'clock. It's a slumber party for old time's sake. Cool. Love it, too. Do you think I'm getting better? <laughs> but be on the lookout for an uninvited guest. Please, Seth, please. When the pizza arrives, things really start jumping. Some people may have to leave early, but others will hang around and hang around. Eat the dead guy's pizza. I feel better already. Really, I do. But for those who stay, there'll be plenty of surprises. <laughs> and non-stop action. for sure no one's getting any sleep the night of the slumber party massacre close your eyes for a second and sleep forever some people think little girls should be seen and not heard but i think oh bondage up yours one two three four I thought we were going to do this. Isn't it this little, your little essay thing? And then uh, we do a... Oh, no. We're not doing that every time. Oh, I thought we were. Nah. <laughs> the format's... It's, uh, it's, it's fluid. You know? Yeah, it's uh, amorphous. We're real, uh, we're real wild and crazy guys here. Anything can happen. Yeah, this is like the most punk rock podcast there is. Everything is DIY, real fluid. <laughs> doing it for the sake of art. I feel like there probably is like an actual punk rock podcast. Out there somewhere that probably is more punk rock. Than I this. doubt it because oh, you, oh, you saw Bad Religion. Like, um, I saw Bad Religion like 10 years ago. Well, actually, shit, like 20 years ago. ago yeah. <laughs> Warp Tour 2001. <laughs> oh, yeah, that reminds me. You, um, yeah, actually, it was Warp Tour 2001. It had, uh, yeah, it had to be something like that. It was um, forever ago. Yeah. You were talking about Tiger Army the other day. You know, new right? album. New album, right? And you said they were country. I listened to it. I feel like it's a little. I mean, I don't know about oh, the previous. This, this new album sounds exactly like Tiger Army. Oh, I was going to say it's like really surf rocky. Oh, yeah. It does have the more angular like guitar work. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think it's. I'm sounds, into it. I like it a lot. It sounds like Power of Moonlight, their second album. Their first two albums, like Psychobilly, right? The third album, they get a little bit more experimentate, experimental, but it's basically still the Psychobilly. Fourth album, they veer over and kind of into just like pop punk territory. It's got a few good songs, but it's not that great. Fifth album, more country sound to it. Definitely way more instrumentation, trying out different things. It was like Nick 13 was already had his like, own country album. That's what he was into. Mm-hmm. When this album came out, fucking just sounds like Tiger Army again. It was pretty good. It's really good for spooky season. 
It's perfect for, for spooky season. I always kind of listen to Psycho Billy around uh, spooky season. And it's weird in the heat of spooky season right now. Friday was Friday 13th and full moon. 50th anniversary of Scooby Doo, which is the most important of them. Yeah, so that was the official kickoff of Spooky Season. The podcast will now reflect that we are on a spooky steady season march tour. of yeah, just spooky stuff. We're only going to be watching spooky movies for a while now until October 31st. Yeah, until uh, Halloween. Normally, I listen to Psycho Billy. I've actually been listening to like um, old school Dove and ska and like uh, <laughs> Ballroom. <laughs> ballroom. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, like um, yeah. yeah. Like the underground, like mm-hmm. uh, gay trans, like club music for like <laughs> voguing and stuff. So uh, not s- too spooky. Not been listening to spooky stuff. More like fun stuff. <laughs> when you're done, you can listen to Thriller though. Vincent Price is in it. The Thriller movie is was directed by John Landis. So there's a little fact for you, kids. Uh, another new album came out though. Alex Cameron. I haven't listened to it at all. <laughs> I need to, though, because I really love Alex Cameron, and I have tickets to see him on December 7th, but I haven't listened to the album at all yet. You, you just wanted to tell people you got tickets to see him, maybe. Well, here's the thing. I got two tickets. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. Uh-huh. So, who's going with me? Well, I need a date. So now, fucking date watch. <laughs> this is going to be a new uh, podcast within a podcast called uh, Cult Date Watch, or this Date is Cult. A- Something. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have updates. Yep, updates every week. Um, worldwide manhunt for the date or lady hunt. The December seventh is the show. So yeah, a couple months. I got two months. Two months to hammer this out before I just end up like going with my ex girlfriend or something. But you know, it's basically remember in like nineteen ninety three when like Hulk Hogan was not in the WWF because all the steroid stuff. And Vince McMahon was like, all right, Lex Luger is going to be the new Hulk Hogan. <laughs> and they had uh, the Lex Express. It was basically like Lex Luger was going on like a political campaign <laughs> yeah. to become like a baby face. Well, this is after he slammed Yokozuna, right? No, the hit Lex Express, the tour ends when he slams Yokozuna. Oh, shit. He flies in on a helicopter, <laughs> jumps out, slams Yokozuna, and he's that's it. He's over for all time, right? <laughs> Him and his metal forearm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. For, yeah. <laughs> he had some football injury and he had a metal plate. So they really worked that shit in a lot of angles. Like, yeah. One of his moves was just like... Yeah, I think forearm, it was right? his finishing move. His special move of the year was like the Lex forearm shit. Oh, my God. Like a forearm tackle. Um, the Lex Express, uh, all-American Lex Luger sort of shit, like crashed <laughs> and burned. And he just dipped out to go back to WCW. Hopefully that's not what happens with Date Watch. At Kyle Main, two Y's, K Y Y L E M A G N E. Um, we're gonna need uh, what feet pictures, panty pictures. I don't know what, what you're into. Nightgown pictures. Nightgowns, obviously. What um, turns you on? More what about you me. Off? Um, I'm over six feet. I can bench press about three ex girlfriends. <laughs> uh, Which three? <laughs> <laughs> My most like recent one because she was only like weighed like one fifteen. She was little, <laughs> so three of her. I can bench press about three of her. That's still pretty, that's a 345. I mean, that's good. like my max. It's not like I'm doing full sets of like 350. <laughs> <laughs> Can bench press about 350 at one time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I like punk rock. I like spooky stuff. Tattoos. I, I, I have a preference for witches, but I mean, not everyone can be a witch. So if you're some <laughs> other like supernatural being, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> That's about it, though, for Date Watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's been Kyle with Date Watch. <laughs> Kyle checking in on Date Watch. All right. Now we're going to talk about the Slumber Party Massacre. All right. I'm, you do your thing. I got like five bullet points I want to go after. Your All right. Well, actually, the thing I want to do first is the other day when we were riding and you came over, you are like, yeah, it's got a lot of nudity in it. Oh, there's a whole bunch of, of boobies in it. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to hear... Your thoughts on the film oh. first before I do a dramatic reveal. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know what. Uh, what are you looking for? You want to go through my, my bullet points here? Yep. Uh, first one. No way. This wasn't written as a comedy, and the director just didn't get it. Uh, there is a part in the middle where there's like twenty fake jump cuts or jump scares. Uh, I that has to be intentional. And like the next door neighbor, his whole character makes no sense. It, I feel like this was written. As a joke. Okay. Um, uh, number two, so many boobs. Right off the bat, boobs. 
or the third bullet point. Everything this killer does is weird, and everything has like a vague sexual innuendo. There's oh, some vague, serious huh? Bundy vibes here. <laughs> vague sexual innuendo. Well, I mean, like it's not. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like he's he because there's no motivation for him at all. So I don't know what his thought process mm-hmm. is, but he, everything he does seems like he's he's got some repressed woman issues. <laughs> Uh, plus his tool, power tool, on the it makes no sense. How does it still have power? How is it uh, drilling through people? Is it gas powered? Because there's no way a battery powered tool is doing that kind of damage. And uh, it's supposed to be his penis. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> that's his penis. Yeah, Falcon. So he's drilling. Uh, let's see. Uh, the shower scene. Who decided that was a good idea? I guarantee you, it wasn't in the original screenplay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm hopefully, you, this comes out in the actual uh, your essay. I don't know. I mean, you're kind of on the right track already, <laughs> despite doing no research. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping like you wouldn't uh, do any research at all, and you'd just be like, "All right, well, that was weird." <laughs> oh, it was weird, but <laughs> <laughs> that was a weird murder movie. Uh, and the last two I have aren't really important, but uh, why dump the ashtray out the window? Why not dump it in the garbage? And two, there was nowhere near enough sugar in that Kool Aid. Oh, I noticed that too. Yeah, Court and I watched it. And we're like, what the fuck is that? Was Kool-Aid? they're making like white people Kool Aid? I'm white. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? They're making Anglo Kool Aid. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anglo Aid. Uh, like uh, that shower. Like, why are they talking about sports so much? They love b-ball and ba- baseball and football. They talk about all three. Mm-hmm. Um, also, none of the women have ever played basketball before. Uh, Valerie, didn't you see her driving to the hoop? <laughs> You can't see me doing it, but I'm she doing the emotions. S- sweet layup, and then all the other girls are like, Psh, "Teacher's pet." <laughs> like, the, what? The fucking coach has the best line right there. Larry Bird, you ain't. <laughs> uh, all right, is that it for? Uh, I mean, I, I wrote down some of my other favorite lines here. Uh, Just make me look like you. This is the only good way to get them. I don't remember where that one's from. And uh, there's always boys around Trish and Diane because that one reminded me of uh, the John Kruger Mellencamp song. So with boys around Trish and Diane, showing their titties just as soon as they can. Oh, oh yeah, breasts <laughs> are out. <laughs> I was about to be like, is that a real song? <laughs> That's your remix of it, obviously. That's my my Yankovic version. I guess it's not going to be that shocking of a twist now, because you kind you kind of like. I mean, it was it's there in the movie, so you. Know, <laughs> uh, this is considered the feminist slasher movie. Yeah. Yep. So let's talk about it. This film, directed by Amy Holden Jones, written by Rena Mae Brown. She's an author and a feminist activist. <clears throat> she uh, absolutely did write this as a satire of slasher <laughs> movies. I just feel like the director and the actors didn't really get it. Like, for, I don't know what's going on, but some of these actors take it way too seriously. Like, I, the, the guy that plays a serial killer, I don't know what his deal is. We got some more information <laughs> okay. to share with you about it. Uh, so she wrote the screenplay parody of teen slasher fix entitled it Sleepless Nights. However, when she submitted it to the producers, Roger Corman, by the way. Mistake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did not say that? I was looking to see who produced it, but I didn't pay attention to the credits very much. Yeah, I for, definitely saw it was directed by a woman or written by a woman. It's like New World Pictures, which is Roger Corman's <clears throat> production studio. I guess I missed it. They uh, were fucking dumb and didn't realize that it was satire. So they... Like oh we're gonna they gonna shoot it straight basically, as if it's actually just a regular slasher movie. As a result, the movie displays a lot more humor, both intended and unintended, than others of this genre. Roger Corman is dumb. <laughs> <clears throat> um, Rita Mae Brown is a celebrated author. She's written about twenty books, got tons of poetry. I'm not familiar with her. Um. Yeah, I don't. I went through her. Um, I mean, that's. A, I mean, there's people that have been authors yeah. their entire lives and were very famous that I, I mean, like, for some reason, I just don't know. Mm. There's just so many books out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I went through her bibliography and there was nothing that I had read before. Mm. Um, some of them seem interesting, so I, I might read them now. I always like feminist <laughs> authors. Virginia Woolf. Shout out to Virginia Woolf. Rest in peace. To the lighthouse. <laughs> to the lighthouse. I fucking love that book. Um, she does have some spectacular quotes though. About feminism, the world writ large, that sort of thing. I wrote down one here that I really like. It's, uh, if the world were a logical place, men would ride side saddle. No, you wouldn't, because it's fucking uncomfortable to ride side saddle. No one should ride side saddle. <clears throat> well, I think there's, um, the reason I like it is because I think there's a couple layers to it. So, I mean, I get, I get what you're saying. I just think, as a practical matter. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like not... It's just not... There's, not a, there's a reason ladies way. don't like riding side saddle. Yeah. 
But you, so the first thing is like logically, like yeah, you don't want to smash your balls, right? So seemingly that's what you would want to do. But as you said, why would anyone ride side saddle? <laughs> and then so I feel like she's inversing it. So it's like right. women will ride horses. Man, you can ride side saddle because you a bitch. <laughs> Um, not to put words in her mouth, but I like that. That's, that's what I got. <laughs> uh, this, uh, this is the first of a trilogy, technically. They're all, the second one. I mean, there's, I mean, Sleepaway Camp uh, has sequels mm-hmm. too, but. Uh, the, the. Are uh, they related? I didn't, I mean, obviously. The second one is directly related to the first one because Courtney, Valerie's younger sister in this one is the main character in Sleep- Summer Party Massacre 2. Uh-huh. Uh, the third one, mm, kind of tenuous, but all three of the films are directed by women, which is a pretty big deal, especially in the eighties. So, yeah, eighties directing slasher movies. This is the only one that was specifically written as a satire, though, because of like how I assume like Rita didn't write the other two, right? No, yeah. Um, because of she how she, wonder, she hated this fucking movie. No, because of how this one was received, and I. You could obviously see it was like this has got to be a parody. Like, yeah, they, didn't, they just I mean? didn't quite do it right. So <laughs> when they wrote the other ones, they continued in that spirit where it's like, all right, <laughs> this is kind of it's got to be kind of a joke so that the audience still likes it. So even though she didn't write them, um, and they're not quite as good as the first one, we'll probably watch them eventually. They do still have like this the same spirit of the first one. Uh, Amy Holden Jones, she's our director, as I mentioned previously. Uh, she was an editor for a long time. She really wanted to direct. She was pretty famous editor too, right? Yeah. Well, this is, she was given two opportunities at the time. She could direct Slumber Party Massacre, or she could edit Steven Spielberg's upcoming film E.T. E. No, fuck. <laughs> she did Slumber Party Massacre. She wanted to direct. I get it. I don't know that she made the wrong call. Mm-hmm. If she wanted to be a director, I think that's probably the right right move. Yeah, I mean, she wanted to direct, so may as well do that. Um, and like, yeah, she was already well established editor, obviously. So. I just need to know if this fucking shower scene was in the original script. I don't know for sure. Um, it seems so out of place with everything else, but it could just be me. Well, there's uh, so all the nudity and weird uh, like sex- psychosexual stuff, uh, it's all to point out um, the male gaze in <laughs> film in general, but very specifically in slasher films. So a lot of the nudity we see is uh, instigated by or seen through the eyes of a male like um voyeur who's watching them Mm -hmm. so it's like yeah you fucking creeps you being a fucking creep well i mean like the only that's only true of the the actual slumber party scene the very opening we see trish or diane i forget which one is which Mm -hmm. and it's like the one of the first shots is her boobs and i don't think anybody's staring at her in that scene and then the shower scene too like you can say like we are the voyeur in that case but that's true of every film yeah, um, so that's one of the main points that Rita Mae Brown wanted to get across is that slasher films are beholden to the male gaze. Right. So there, she. I don't know for sure if the shower scene was added. I do know that um, there was like very little changes made to the screenplay, so it's probably still in there. The purpose of it presumably is so it resembles a slasher film, but then also like. It is so comically long and like unrealistic and weird. <laughs> so you're just kind of like, what is going on? Because like when uh, Trish rolls up to Valerie, he's like, "You played great basketball today," and it's like, "Are, are they gonna kiss?" <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of it, I think, is to just be so obviously like right. ridiculous. So you're just like, oh well. That's I mean, I was laughing, but yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like mm. to me, it's the again, it's like it feels like. The cast, and I don't want to say Amy wasn't in on it either, but didn't have quite grasp what the script was. Oh, so the cast um is they're acting as if it's like serious because the production the producers knew. Yeah, I'm sure Roger Corman was like, "Yeah, this is a fucking yeah, serious movie, a slasher movie." Yeah, yeah, come on, this is real shit. Well, as serious as slasher movies are, you know, yeah. they're taking it relatively seriously. Uh, Amy Holden Jones, however, um, was aware that it was parody. That's why it's uh shot really comically like there's so many scenes of him holding the drill like in front of his like his penis and, yeah. yeah or hanging between his legs and stuff like she's like okay yeah i get it <laughs> who are our stars uh we got michelle michaels which is what a crazy name right michelle 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 <laughs> she uh plays trish she's our final girl 
Question mark? Isn't Valerie? Well, actually, a lot of people survive in this movie. Yeah, Valerie Courtney. And they Trish. beat the shit out of uh, the drill killer, which is like, obviously, that's like the triumph. Of yeah, I mean, the co- coach here was uh, clearly had the wrong wrong idea. <laughs> she had the guy down beating him, and then like, Trish mm. runs up and stabs him in the kidneys. And she's like, no, don't kill him. I don't know. Yeah. That's the other thing, too. Like, tr- at one point, Trish hits him with a bat, right? And they run out of the room. I'm like, he's on the ground. Club is facing with a goddamn bat. Well, yeah, and they're <laughs> moving like the dressers and stuff to get out. I was like, just drop that shit on his head. Mm-hmm. But I'm, you know, bring that motherfucker. That, that doesn't work in a slasher movie. Right? <laughs> then I think they should have done something besides just had him hit him with a bat. The movie is a brisk 77 minutes. Yeah, it's, all right? it's a quick <laughs> movie. <laughs> <laughs> they had to fill. They had to pad some stuff in there. <laughs> uh, Robin still is Valerie. And uh, Valerie, she's the other final girl. Uh, Michael Vieja is Russ Thorne. Is that the killer? Yeah, he's the incel killer, drill kill incel. I love you. You're so beautiful. I don't know when they say his name. I don't think they're well, maybe it's in the paper at the beginning. Oh, yeah, because and also, like, you hear the radio a few times about, yeah. like, oh, he escaped mental patient. And he loves the real Ted Bundy character, real Ted Bundy type, real uh, guy on Twitter type, real <laughs> reply guy. We got Deborah Deliso, which is Kim. She's the fridge gymnast. That scene where she's in the fridge. Oh, yeah. yeah. Apparently, it's like, they just like, all right, we're going to put you in this fridge. You got to act dead. And she was all just scrunched in there, like barely hanging in. Well, I mean, it's a fridge. It's not really designed yeah, I mean, to be humid. Uh, you can die in refrigerators, the old one. You can die in the new ones if you don't, if you just stay in there. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> well, wasn't it like kids used to like hide in them or some yeah, shit? Yeah, well, I mean, you can't there's... open them from the inside. <laughs> well, we had that old one at the the lake, from, mm-hmm. uh, Grandpa Grandpa's old refrigerator that had a the... latch. Remember? Oh yeah, that that's one of the dangerous ones. Mm-hmm. I never tried hiding it. It always had like soda and beer in it. Anyway, so <laughs> yeah. there's no room. <laughs> it constantly needed to be defrosted. It was always uh, <laughs> remember those old Budweiser cans with the can used to look like with the, it looked like all like. The sigil, like a house, yeah, house yeah. sigil. <laughs> they still make those cans, don't they? Oh, I don't know. It's usually, you just so you've seen the Bud Light cans, you don't see the Budweiser cans anymore. I don't see. I'm pretty sure Budweiser still has the red can with like the fucking, uh, like fucking filigree. And stuff <laughs> yeah, <like. laughs> we got uh, Andrea Hanor, who plays Jackie. She uh, Jackie, it, the only the uh, uh, token black girl. She's the ethnic friend. Uh, <laughs> Here in parentheses, next to Jackie, I put waifu. She's my favorite person in the film. <laughs> I did like her the best of all the girls. Mm-hmm. Well, it's mostly... So, first of all, she's not like the, she's the only not boring suburban white girl in the movie. So, I was like... Larry Bird, she ain't. Clocked her real quick. I was like, all right, cool. Let's see what you're doing here, 80s. <laughs> and then the scene where the pizza guy is dead and she's like... I'm still hungry. I'm still eating the pizza. I was like, hell yeah. Because <laughs> the best part is that she opens up and it's like eating the pizza around right on top of the dead dude. I mean, it's like he didn't die in the pizza. <laughs> That's why I, like they're freaking out. It's like, it's not like there's just like magic death dust that comes off of dead people. That pizza's still good. I don't know if I'd necessarily be hungry in that situation because I'd want to stay alert. You know? Yeah, I know. I don't think I would but, try snacking on it. But if slice. I was hungry, I'd be like, well, I mean, that's still fucking good pizza. I like that they do the classic uh, pizza thing. Like, oh, let's order a pizza. No anchovies. Like, anybody fucking orders they, anchovies. The fucking pizza places never offered anchovies, I don't think. I think it's always just been a joke. <laughs> Our grandpa ate anchovies a lot, though. Yeah. Also, for a while, I was eating anchovy sandwiches. Oh, I eat sardines, but not anchovies. Oh, yeah, sardines. That's what I meant. So anchovies? what's the point? What anch- are, what's the difference between anchovies and sardines? The anchovies are like are slightly smaller, I believe, mm-hmm. and they are much saltier and fishier. Mm. So um, probably you can eat anchovy sandwiches. I don't know. I used to eat uh, sardine and guac or not guacamole, but avocado sandwiches. Oh, okay. I just eat sardines, but it sounds pretty good with avocado. We got Gina Smika Hunter Smika. That's middle a cool name. name. Is weird, yeah, she plays Diane, who is a libertarian. Because remember when she's on the phone and her friends are laughing at her and she's like, oh, they just violated our First Amendment. <laughs> That's not the First Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, the right to free speech. But what makes her libertarian is she says some dumb shit and her friends laugh at her and then she acts as if her speech is being. <laughs> like, no, your, your right to free speech isn't being violated. You just said some dumb shit and people laughed at you. <laughs> Thus, libertarian. <laughs> You nailed it. Yeah. Jennifer Myers is Courtney, the little sequel sister. She's a, a 
uh, not the best actress in this movie. I like her mostly because I know in the second film she will turn into a punk rocker and has a band. Is it the same girl that plays her in the second one? Uh, it is, yeah. Huh. Uh, my wife watched this movie and she fell asleep while watching it. And there's a part where Val repeatedly says, Courtney, Courtney. And it woke her up. <laughs> it woke her up. And she thought I was doing it. And it was like a little, she's like, why? She's wondering why a little girl is yelling her name. Or why I was yelling her name a little girl. <laughs> Courtney, Courtney, yeah. Courtney, Courtney. Because your wife is named Courtney. <laughs> you don't hardly ever call her Courtney, though. Nah, I don't really, I don't you know. Call her Coops. Only when I'm angry. Uh, Joseph Allen Johnson is Neil. I don't. And then David Milburn is Jeff. I don't know the difference between Neil or Jeff. They're both the... Yeah, they're both Neil and the, Jeff. They're both the weird incels that are creeping on him. Uh, Jim Boyce is John Minor, who is also an incel. I think he's the ginger one. Oh, the one that gets killed in the car. Yeah, Diane. Mm. He's not an incel. He's not celibate, involuntary or otherwise. He's getting it from Diane. All right. Misogynist. There you go. <laughs> regular misogynist. Let me Plain change. old regular misogynist. <laughs> Changing my notes here for posterity. <laughs> regular old misogynist. All right. Let's get into the film. First off, we got to talk about how the entire score of this film was made on one Casio keyboard. <laughs> And they honestly, they did, nailed it. They did a really good job with it. They bum, like, bum, bum. whoever <laughs> was like playing like Casio, like got a lot of good shit out of Casio. <laughs> They're like, you know what? This this keyboard can do it. I know it. <laughs> it's There's Ross a little friends. Casio that could. I, uh, the movie, of course, starts off with like oh, a happy suburban neighborhood. Bum, bum, bum. We see kids delivering newspapers, and it's morning time, and everyone's the birds are chirping, and there's boobies, and you're like, nothing bad could ever happen now. Uh, first off, though, fucking nightgown. So you're into it already. This is a really tantalizing <laughs> scene for me. I mean, you should really like because they have this couple. They show some some that's nightgowns why, later on. Yeah, this, that's this. why you like Jackie because she had the best nightgown. She did. They really like suited her, so that's good costume work. Yeah, but this scene. It's great. So go from nightgown, uh, unnecessary eighties titties. Because I mean, it was a slasher movie. Let's fucking get <laughs> right hot. the right, We got it. We're coming out hot. And then she puts on a really cute sundress. She's getting rid of like all of her stuffed animals and stuff. Yeah, she's no longer a girl. She has, but no, not yet a woman. She has no time for childish things now. She's eighteen. She's gonna have a big time slumber party with Maui Wowie. Maui, wow. that's uh that is the one note from my my wife is that it didn't really seem like much of a slumber party i'm it was, it's just like girls hanging out yeah you know? high traffic you know There's yeah like so many people coming in and out and shit uh and man the fucking prop weed or maybe it's real weed that's just what it looks like in the 80s it's fucking that dirt swag <laughs> yeah it's like, Maui wow you said so no man it looked, fucking looks like dirt <laughs> you get, get a headache after that shit you fucking feel like you're time traveling. I remember one time we had like roll your own blunt night. I mean, a group of friends. So there's like 12 of us. I'm not good at rolling blunts. I, you, I, I just, yeah, you empty out a Swisher Sweet. Good thing. Same yeah. shit. <laughs> no, that, I mean, that's how I roll blunts. Oh, well, well we're well, on no, the same page. I've been, well, I did, I've used a few other papers, but yeah, usually we just switch sweets, break them up. But yeah, so there's about 12 of us and we all roll blunts. So we were just using like merch, you know, like cheap ass sweets since. We needed so much of it. We needed to pick out the seeds and stems and shit. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, fucking blunts to the face. Everyone was smoking them. I remember I stepped outside to smoke a cigarette with my ex girlfriend, but she wasn't my girlfriend or my ex at the time. This was a long time ago when we were just regular ass friends. And, uh, I was sitting there like, yeah, I bet I can bench press you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, even before we were dating, it was a joke to, like, do some cats. Her name is Cat. <laughs> and like, yeah, you just do like preacher curls with cat. Like, I'm just gonna do some cats real quick. <clears throat> but um I just like sitting out there like talking to her about random shit. And uh because of this shitty ass dirt weed, I was like having deja vu like endlessly and I was like, Cat, I think I'm time traveling. <laughs> it was like the dumbest shit I ever said off of a blunt. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you don't wanna smoke that dirt weed. <laughs> Sounds like it's not that bad if you thought it was trying your time traveling. Usually, I just get really tired and get a headache. I mean, that happened too. And like, we also like ate Wendy's or something. Wendy's is gross. So. I like Wendy's. It was d- different days. I was probably like twenty-one back then, <laughs> ages ago. 
All right, we're all worried. Uh, shit. Of course, her parents are going out of town, so it's party time. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, how else are you going to set up a movie? I don't know. I like watched how... at least 20 movies where that's set up. So. Well, I, it's like, um, is it unoriginal or is it? She's just fucking really nailing all the tropes <laughs> of a slasher movie. <laughs> um, this is where we're introduced to the creepy neighbor who's just creepy just because neighbors are sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like uh, later on the fucking fake j- scare with the uh, the snail hunt. Yeah, it's like the best way to get him is this here meat cleaver, which I've polished to a glimmer. He's like, yeah, I've killed fifty three already. Oh, fifty four. Then he gives meat cleavers. Mm. Well, he gets drills, but drills. you know, uh, I, he's not really used as a red herring or anything. He's honestly just creepy, just because because <laughs> you uh, immediately find out who the killer is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's obvious from the very beginning. <laughs> 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 they show uh, the killer killing a, a handy woman <laughs> outside the school right away, and like that killer, he got to the school really quick because he's mm-hmm. he's at Trisha's house stealing Barbies, yeah. And like immediately after that, he's at the school killing the handy woman. Well, he's got a van, so you know. No, he steals the van from the handy woman. Oh, you fuck, you're right. <laughs> you just the hot footed it. Over there. <laughs> yeah. And they walk in sh- Canadian tuxedo. They show him running around the school. He seemed pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, principal, principal. There's a, a strange man in a Canadian tuxedo running around with a <laughs> gas-powered power tool. <laughs> That's just Tim Allen. <laughs> <laughs> He's on cocaine <laughs> again. <laughs> you remember that uh, episode of Tool Time? I don't remember what reminded me of this. Maybe I saw a clip from it or something. But uh, they install like the speakers in the house, and uh, Tim Allen accidentally overhears one of his sons talking to his friend, and his friend's like. Tool time. They should call that show Fool Time. <laughs> <laughs> and Tim Allen's character gets real upset because his son didn't stand up for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should watch that episode for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Someday I want to do like all the very special episodes of like sitcoms. <laughs> Cutting to the school where we're getting some date rape tips from our two goofy incels. Because one of them's like... Yeah, man, just fucking grab know. her by the pussy or whatever. <laughs> but he says something more neutral. Like, yeah, you just got to take charge, take action, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, I don't know. Uh, they're interrupted, though, because they see the gym teacher who's doing some maintenance work at the... Not the gym teacher. It's oh, the fucking whatever, the handy woman. <laughs> whatever, the maintenance lady. And uh, and she's like, he's like, I don't know. <laughs> he's like, hey, have you ever thought about uh, dating a younger man? What? And she I, seems into it. <laughs> I mean, you gotta experiment while you're young. <laughs> I like that the, the the camera's just like focused on her ass. And he was like, "Oh, I think I'm in love <laughs> with that booty." And I was just like, "Damn, fly to Hades, white girl ass." <laughs> <laughs> what a time. Um, yeah. So he's like, "Try it, you'll like it." I wrote that down because. Uh, oh, I wrote that down too. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 what a great quote. Try it, you'll like it. She gets straight up fucking yoinked into the van. Mm. Uh, there's another movie, Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. Buffalo Ball, uh, Bill yoinks that lady into the van. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what uh, Ted Bundy would do. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Serious Ted Bundy vibes from this dude. Oh. oh. I mean, straight up, the guy escapes prison and then kills the people at a slumber party, which is basically what Ted Bundy did. Mm-hmm. That's true. Uh, yeah, Ted Bundy's kind of like gross. <laughs> 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 Fucking hate Ted Bundy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, normally you don't really like serial killers, <laughs> but I really don't like. I Ted really Bundy. don't like Ted Bundy. <laughs> yeah. He's not like Dahmer, where like you know Dahmer was like troubled. <laughs> 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 he's so polite in his prison interviews and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, uh, yeah, I had to get drunk to kill because I didn't like killing. But you know, he needed those sex like zombies. <laughs> Just because, I mean, not sidetracked, this is all relevant to this, film yeah. watching serial killer stuff. This is probably what this guy was into. I we like, don't know, um, we didn't get to see his end result. His dad, uh, He did sack out in the middle of a murder house. Yeah, Dahmer was probably, in, in his high school days, uh, he was having some problems with aggression, and blah, blah, blah. You know, as you would when you're uh psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> and his dad was like, I know what to do. I'm getting him a weight set, get him out there lifting weights. And so Dahmer just got fucking jacked and was, like, hurting people. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a smart move. Anyways. He's... Man, my son has a lot of aggression issues. We better make him real strong. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you be in the WWE eventually. <laughs> fuck <Okay>. them up. <laughs> you know, the real Chris Benoit type character. <laughs> I think that was traumatic brain injury, wasn't it? <laughs> that was, like, the 
excuse. I'm, or no, I don't mean to say excuse. There's evidence that his brain was fucked up. But I think he was just like, you know how like they do uh, shows in, for like Saudi Arabia now. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Chris Benoit was just confused, and he's like, "Yo, we gotta get to the WrestleMania in heaven." <laughs> Too soon. How long ago was that? That's forever ago. <laughs> um. Oh yes. Yeah, so we got down that, that goddamn Kevin Sullivan. <laughs> Fuck the fucking Satanist Kevin Sullivan. Yeah, he's gonna tie me that tree of woes. <laughs> <laughs> the Buddha Dean. Me in the dungeon of dome. <laughs> We got the Yeti. <laughs> the Shockmaster. He's here to shock you with a Shockmaster. Uh, Man, WCW. That's the podcast we should have done. Fucking the WCW. WCW. In the 90s. My God. Fucking the late 80s WCW is great, too. Yeah. My God. Well, anyways, um, this is where we see he kills with the drill. And it's like, hmm, is that drill supposed to be his dick? <laughs> and of course it is. I mean, if you think about it. Most slashers have like phallic weaponry, right? I mean, well, most weaponry is phallic. They have big ass knives and I swords. I guess you have a dude with a bat. I mean, that's kind of looks like a dick. <sighs> yeah, but you don't swing around like a dick. You've never um, swung your dick around, <laughs> <laughs> tap people in the face with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that when I see a bat, my first and you someone swinging around, I'm like, oh, phallic. <laughs> that's not my first. <laughs> I am. I'm like, damn, that's a big dick. <laughs> Not like when I watched uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, I see Chow Young Fat doing his sword play by himself. I'm like, oh, he's masturbating. <laughs> what was the name of that special sword? Uh, I haven't watched that movie in a while. I think it was so. the One-Eyed Serpent. Well, uh, cut to WNBA. Boop. <laughs> yeah, that might get cut. <laughs> WM, the, obviously, women's basketball players are better than They're way better than this. <laughs> their good fundamentals make up for their inability to dunk. <laughs> Someone can dunk. Also, like, <laughs> dunking's not that cool. I like fast breaks that, like, lead to dunks and stuff, but I hate that shit where it's just, like, your center is posted up and, like, yeah, he just turns around and dunks. It's like, that's fucking boring. <laughs> well, take that, Shaq. Yeah. <laughs> so that's his whole game. I like Shaq. He's a funny guy. I didn't ever like the way he played. Yeah, he when he was yeah, really young and he was first in the NBA on the Magic, and he could actually move, that was pretty cool. But then he just kept getting bigger and bigger. He just pushed people around and dunk. But I mean, like, fucking, if you can't be stopped, you know? <laughs> yeah, you can. You just got to foul him, send him the free throw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he couldn't shoot freeze. What a fool. Uh, Valerie is... um. The best at basketball because she can complete a layup. And yeah, the other girls call her a teacher's pet because <laughs> she has some semblance of talent. <laughs> We're starting out baseball trials next week. Yeah, <laughs> basketball over. <laughs> baseball now. So you just did one final practice of basketball? There wasn't like a game or anything? No, that was it. That was it. Final practice. Stay sharp for baseball. <laughs> Is there <laughs> a lot of crossover between basketball players and baseball players? I don't think so. You need like completely different skill sets <laughs> and bodies. <laughs> it was uh, Bo Jackson, right? No, that was football and baseball. Yeah. And you got MJ, right? Michael ja- Jordan? Mm-hmm. And he was really good at baseball. <laughs> he was so good at baseball. I always remember that. Uh, you remember My Brother and Me from uh, Nickelodeon? Yeah. I always remember that episode where that, the older brother, maybe his younger brother, I can't remember now. He tries out for basketball and doesn't get it. And his dad's talking to him. He's like, you know... Michael Jordan, uh, he didn't make his high school basketball team. Look at him now. And he's like, playing baseball? <laughs> yeah. It was the older brother. Ah, the 90s. <laughs> this has been a podcast within a podcast. Uh, my brother and me talk about my brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you think if we released a podcast that was called My Brother and Me on My Brother and Me, that would get in trouble for my brother My brother and me? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I think the McElroys would probably be cool with it. But... That Their is fan base. That is, is until we do the episode where it's my brother and me talk about my brother, my brother, <laughs> and we just criticize uh, an episode of my brother, my brother. And me. I've never listened to an episode my of my brother, and my brother and me. Oh shit! This is a scene. It's butts and boobs time. Butts and boobs. Very butts lingering boobs. shower scene. Uh, there's a like an off screen voiceover of a girl, and she's like, "My boobs are getting bigger. Check them out." And you're like, "Oh." <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> also, you have no other choice. <laughs> you turn, turn around, you close your eyes. So Trish is 
really cleaning herself. Yeah, she got a stank booty. Well, it's just like, wow, I'm like surprised to see this in a movie because normally it's like the most like fake shit ever yeah. when someone takes a shower in a movie, but she's like, whatever, I'll get clean. <laughs> okay. Uh, they are sharing a bar of soap, though. Yeah, that's gross. And I was like, fucking. The- <laughs> Why don't you people have washcloths or loofah or something? Like, <laughs> I don't yeah. think they had loofahs in 82. Yeah. Uh, my exact quote here is Sharon Soap. I saw her in her ass, though. <laughs> <laughs> they no loof for a washcloth, you fucking honkies. <laughs> You're doing white wrong. You're just I've gonna, been doing white wrong for a long time. You're just going to take a bar of soap and slide it in your ass like a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound really refreshing. <laughs> now that you mention it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I bet that feels weird as shit. <laughs> Slippery. Um, and this is where. What if you try to hold it in there? You just gonna squeeze your hard. Yeah, you're working out your Grip glutes. It. <laughs> Make sure your glutes are strong and your asshole's clean. Mm-hmm. Real clean. You got a clean crack. Uh, this is uh where you can eat, you can eat dinner off my crack. <laughs> I had an Irish spring up there for 15 <laughs> minutes. In fact, some of it's still up there. <laughs> I crushed it into dust. Uh, this is where you find out Trish is in love with Valerie. Or Valerie. Least, I mean, for a second, I was like, oh, maybe. <laughs> was this where the thing was going? We find out that Trish is just kind of nice. Yeah, she just seems like she's a nice person. But she comes over, um, scoping out Valerie's breasts a little bit. She, I see she's peeking in, you know. Mm-hmm. But she is like, hey, you played basketball wonderfully today. <laughs> Something like that. And Valerie's like, oh, thanks. That was a weird way to say it. But, uh, you know, the, the shower scene ends. And you're like, ah, drats. But luckily, now it's time for some panties action. <laughs> and I was, um, I've always been kind of opposed to the style of 80s panties. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, they're just, I'm well, never really into them or anything like that. But when I was watching this movie, I was like, hmm, you know what? You could probably do something with 80s panties. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't what know. What that something is, I don't know, but you yeah. can do it. I don't know if I've talked about it in detail on this podcast, but. I think nightgowns are cool, like legitimately. It is a joke that I want you to send me nightgown pics. That's kind but of it's weird. also not a joke, if you know but, what I mean. Well, I just like, nightgowns are cool. I like um the variety of designs and stuff like that. I feel the same way about dresses. Sometimes I'll even like design dresses or like draw them in my notebook because I like dresses a lot. I think dresses are cool. <laughs> Gay. And um, I, when I was watching this movie now, I was like, you oh, know what? Draw some panties. Fucking, mm, fucking this panties time. <laughs> I'm going to branch out into panties. So you open Kyle's notebooks. It's a series of poems about like uh, werewolves eating vampires, serial and, killer uh, stuff, and um, dresses and panties. And drawings of dresses and faceless women in panties and nightgowns. And so it's just more serial killer stuff. So yeah, it's just a lot of serial. Someone's gonna stuff. open it and be like, "Oh my god, <laughs> oh my god!" And they're like, "Are you a repressed homosexual <laughs> son?" No, I don't you're want- gonna send some poor homicide <laughs> detective on a wild goose chase. Yeah. No, you're the red herring in like some weird detective movie. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, yeah, uh, they're all talking shit about Valerie. You know why? She got the moves. Valerie's got fucking big uterus energy. <laughs> she just like she's, she's powerful. You big clitoral energy. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the, the proper. It's no, it's the uterine, uterine power. Uterine. Yeah, that's the uh, fallopian tubes. Yeah, yeah, and ovaries. You know, just all the female guts. <laughs> She's just real powerful with the female guts and gonads. <laughs> ovaries are gonads. I'm aware. And your nuts are gonads. They're actually the same thing. <gasps> what? It would, tell me about the penis and the clitoris, Kyle. What? Are, oh, they're the same. thing. Oh God! Well, the head of your penis is like the same tissue. Yeah. Um. Uh. You you started out as a woman. You're female. <gasps> then you mutated. <laughs> Into a dude. And what a man. <laughs> and what a man. Six foot five? I think I'm six four. I haven't oh. measured myself since I was in high school. I don't know. Well, the girls don't like Valerie because she's that. too powerful. Um, And she, Valerie overhears them talking shit. Trisha's nice, though. She offers her to come to the party. But I mean, really, the only one that's talking shit is, is Diane. Diane. She's a libertarian. As, yeah, as we yeah, so. established, she's a real shit. Yeah, you think she Trish should be like, "Hey, you want to come to my party?" Diane's like a bitch. We can, we'll, we're gonna make fun of her and stuff. Anyways, you know, she eats all the chips too. She's when gonna bring her super boyfriend yeah, over. When they bust out the snacks, like we gotta hurry up and eat these for Dan. <laughs> Diane gets here, she eats all the goddamn chips. She's gonna come over here, eat all her chips, leave early to go fuck her boyfriend. What a bitch. <laughs> um, 
And she probably smoke all the Maui Waui too. She seems like that kind of bitch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Valerie's like, nah, I ain't doing that. You guys are kind of jerks, or your friends are kind of jerks. Also, she seems a little bit nervous around Trish, so I'm like, hmm. Maybe there's something. Maybe, there. maybe there is something. Okay. Maybe, maybe they're going to kiss. Uh, the drill man. But I'm pretty sure she's a heterosexual woman based on her preference in magazines. She's a Sly Stallone kind of guy. Yeah, uh, Sylvester Stallone was on the cover of that magazine. Do you think he had his dick out? Yeah, I bet he did. And he mm-hmm. appeared in softcore porn before uh, his career mm-hmm. took off, which was crazy. He, I never thought I really saw him as an attractive man. <laughs> uh, I just got to put my mouth on the vagina. <laughs> I guess maybe just because he was buff. <laughs> I don't know. but uh, yeah. wait, that, wait, what? <laughs> like, the, like, oh, you could be in porn, you're buff. <laughs> oh, I get it. Not like a good looking guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's an extended murder s- stalking scene through the school. It's pretty good. It's shot. Oh, well. yeah. yeah. Uh, and th- this is where you get to see the, the drill man. He he runs pretty fast. He's got like Chuck Taylors on this. So they're doing like, he's doing like, uh, uh, like real like fast tapping is what his running <laughs> sounds like. Like, tap, 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 tap. <laughs> my question is, how does this girl get locked into the, the school? Yeah, from the inside, like. I mean, you those push doors. I think you still just push. Them I mean, they're chain closed. I think is what we saw. But oh, and then yeah. how does he get out? Because that power tool is not coming through a chain. Well, well, he when he goes to capture, right? Remember, she hides in like the closet or whatever yeah. and locks it. And he drills just the hole into the door. He doesn't drill the lock or anything. I guess that's true. He just drills the door, <laughs> and then no he, wonder it breaks to the end. He's putting this thing through a lot of stress. <laughs> well, I mean, how did he get in? <laughs> he just drilled the hole. In the I room. don't know. <laughs> yeah, that that I was like, man, that's fucking weird. Let's ask Rita. She probably forgot something. Yeah. The drill guy kind of looks like Remy Malik. Yeah, he reminded me of somebody, and I could not place it. It's not Remy Malik though. I think it comes up later that I he's I I at this point I was like kind of looks like Remy Malik, but then later on I was like kind of looks like someone else, <laughs> and then at the end I was like kind of looks like Remy Malik, <laughs> uh, who he, he played um, Freddie Mercury you know, in a film called. We are the surviving members of Queen. We would like to be on screen as much as possible. Trish gets dropped off. Is, is this... There's got a motorcycle that drops off Trish, or is it the gym teacher? It's Trish. Gym teacher has her own car. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I was like... Where did this guy come from? It's Who's Mike. Who's this motorcycle this Mike? I think that's his name. I don't Thanks, know. Mike. He's never around again. Yeah, it is a drop again. Which is good, because he's a cool motorcycle guy. Cool motorcycle guys never die. <laughs> Especially not in horrific motorcycle accidents. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is one of the fake out scares. That's a whole series of fake yeah, outs. There's right gonna here. be a bunch of them right there for a while. Uh, Diane's uh, ginger dork boyfriend sneaks up on her and she fucking straight up hip tosses him. <laughs> He's like, "You broke my back." I'm allowed to say this, being somewhat of a ginger myself, but uh, fucking most gingers not attractive, man. <laughs> this is like they, they look pretty weird. <laughs> This guy pale skin, looks weird, pretty weird, weird face shapes. Yeah, right, just right there. don't like him. Uh, but yeah, so the dorky ginger boyfriend. He's really seems to be pretty good at pressuring her into sex, even though he's not that attractive or seemingly charismatic or anything. Maybe know. she just likes a good just, lay. I don't know. It's just the eighties. Uh, we. Oh, uh, now we're with the, the none gym. of her friends like like him either. That comes up with this number part yeah. too. Like I can't understand why he she's left him. I don't get it. I, I don't get it either. Like, <laughs> Uh, this is where we see the gym teacher driving home, and we find out from the radio, this is Venice. This is Venice Beach, California. Venice. Venice Beach, California, the scene of several crimes <laughs> that I committed. <laughs> <laughs> All in one weekend. <laughs> the scourge of Venice. Uh, the gym teacher rolls up home, and she almost gets straight drilled in the oh, face. Another face scare. scare. Because it's actually... Uh, <laughs> another... Handy woman. It's actually the set dresser. <laughs> one of the carpenters on set. Oh, man. A real handy woman. It's a real <laughs> Harrison she, Ford situation. Yeah, she's really... Hey, I'm on screen. Doing my job. <laughs> Must be cool. Like, oh, here's... You're going to film me doing my job. Drilling holes. No problem. After that, she needs to chill out. So it's piano time. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, actually, Trish is playing the piano. Oh, yeah. That's right. Trish. And Cut her, back to Trish. She's playing For piano. some reason, are creepy neighbors in the yeah, house. Yeah, he's fucking in the house. Creeping. You know why he is in there. I want to see some of them boobies. Yeah, he's going to check out all these young girls. 
And I didn't see any here, so I got worried. I looked around. And I yeah. went through your, all your panties and your mom's panties. And and then I was like, what if uh, if I was writing this movie? No offense to Rita. But I would have made it so like um, this creepy neighbor is also a killer. Because you know what? It's usually someone you know. <laughs> uh, we go back to gym teacher. She's got wine. And she gets scared and drops it. And it's like, wine equals blood? <laughs> she doesn't get scared. She actually knocks it over. And then she hears a sound, I guess. But yeah, a cat. A cat prank. <laughs> ah, cat prank. Cat yeah, scared. She's like, you see my cat? And he's like, well, you got locked in the closet somehow. <laughs> she's either making like a quesadilla or like a little lazy man pizza. I'm not sure. She, I mean, it's Friday night. You got to get a little twisted with it. I like these jump scares in the 80s, though, where um, <clears throat> it's not like the modern jump scares where they haven't learned to... They they haven't learned to utilize a way too loud like music <laughs> sounds. Yeah, so it's like not as fucking annoying. <clears throat> I think they should have done that one for the snail one though. I uh, <laughs> re- recently rewatched uh, <laughs> it, the first one, the uh, Tim Curry one. No, um, one with yeah, the, yeah, I don't the recent one because part two came out, and I was like, I'm watch this one. I'll go see part two. It's spooky stuff. Uh, I watched the first one, and I remember seeing it in theaters, and I was like, you know, that's pretty good for like a mainstream like, horror movie. Watched it again this time, and I was like, man, everything is just fucking loud noises. <laughs> like, there's no subtlety at all in it. <laughs> and I was reading reviews about the second one, and uh, it was basically like everything I disliked about the first one magnified tenfold <laughs> in the second one. <laughs> and I was like, oh, maybe I won't see that one. <laughs> at least I won't spend money on it. Anyways, uh, the summer party is about to be crashed by the incels that can't can't even grow their own chest hair. You don't know that. We don't see their chests. Oh, well, they can't grow beards. They look like wimps. They're They're teenage boys. I could grow a beard. You couldn't. Senior year? No, we couldn't. couldn't. (laughs) Don't lie to the audience at home. Well, yeah, I couldn't. They won't respect you anymore. Couldn't grow a beard until I was like 22 or something, I think. It It was a while. Yeah, but fuck them. Cut away from them. Uh, Diane's here. Oh, no, Diane's not. It's Kim and Jackie. And Kim goes, we're here for the orgy. <laughs> and I was like, oh, hell yeah, she parties. <laughs> she and was just joking. Oh, yeah, but she's the one who brought the weed, so it turns out she does party. <laughs> <laughs> and the booze, too. Didn't she steal it? Yeah, she got beer or something. I think it was wine coolers. Oh. Uh, the, this is the motherfucking Kool-Aid scene. Valerie's not making good Kool-Aid, mm. though. I was like, mm. Mm, twice, at least twice. Need, like a lot of sugar and Kool Aid. I mean, if you're gonna drink Kool Aid, like you gotta fucking go for it. Uh, Valerie is in this scene. I noticed she kind of looks like a very young Meryl Streep or Meryl Streep's daughter. Is she? No, no. Oh. But I was like, ooh, serving up some serious Streep vibes. <laughs> um, oh, this is where they talk about Diane being a fiend. They're like, she'll eat all the chips, smoke all the weed, suck all the dicks. <laughs> She's goddamn libertarian. Another libertarian trait, like where they just fucking want everything for themselves, huh? At the cost of everyone else. <laughs> no mutual cooperation ever. She is a fucking libertarian. <laughs> she nailed it. Man, god damn. Stealing all the chips. Uh, they have one ethnic friend, Jackie. It's actually pretty good for an 80s slasher movie, to be honest. Like, wow. They have I one... mean, Night of the Creeps, I don't think there's a single <laughs> person of color in there, but the Japanese. Wow, they have it. one person of color in this movie. Why the fucking did it? I mean, it's still shitty, but it's like, it's, yeah, that, it's a lot to she ask She survives almost to the end, end, too. What's up? She survives almost to the end, too. Mm-hmm. She only dies because she's like, oh, man, we got can't let Valerie die out there by herself. Um, Back to Courtney and Valerie. Uh, Someone knocked over the trash cans, and they're like, I don't want to do it. It's dark out. Yeah, apparently you have a dog out there that we never see. That knocks over trash cans. Courtney convinces Valerie to do it. The second she's gone, fucking Courtney books it upstairs. She almost like four legs it. You know, like when you get down all fours and go up the stairs, she's pretty close to doing it. I think it would have been cool if she did. But she's in a hurry to fucking go, you know, do a little DJing, a little scratching. <laughs> fucking the old <laughs> bee. Yeah, she's trying to check out Sloane's dick in Playgirl. Uh, I like this sort of uh, switch of dynamics where uh, the whole movie so far has been the male gaze uh, objectifying women. And we're now we're going to sort we're, of objectify. Now we get the, it really. a soft opposite of them like objectifying men to a certain extent. But I mean, the power dynamics aren't the same, but Rita, I see what you're doing. 
And so I do like that it's them taking agency of their own sexuality. And they're pretty chill about it, you know? Just like, whatever. We like dicks. <laughs> Ain't no thing. Just don't tear out the centerfold again. Yeah. So she, she puts a brick in the trash can to prevent the dog from knocking it over. I was like, this is a wimpy dog. <laughs> I was thinking of your dog. No, Lily. Yeah, wouldn't stop. Like, oh, brick wouldn't be able to stop her. She'd be like, fuck this trash can. <laughs> I'm after that brick. <laughs> yeah, she eats a brick now. Oh god. Um, back to our slumber party, the titular slumber party. The titular, eh? titular slumber party. Uh, fucking, it's the end of the day, so guess what? Not Time to pop right. them bras off. Titties popping everywhere. Yeah, I mean, this is real shit. If you've ever had a girlfriend, lived with a girl, um, haven't basically been a shitty incel that doesn't realize that everyone's <laughs> human. Uh, like best part of the day, seemingly getting home from work, taking your bra. <laughs> that shit seems to rule. I've never, I get met, it too, I've never met a woman that likes wearing a bra. Nah, um, I get it too. Cause even just well, as soon as I get home from doing anything, I'm like fucking all right, time to be barely dressed. <laughs> so that shit rules. Um, yeah, and then also it's another titillating scene, titulation, <laughs> titulation. It's probably the last titillating scene of the movie. Yeah, because oh no, there's one little part where Diane uh, shows her booby. Oh, very artistically shot. Like, yeah, it's a weird one. I like it. I was like, huh, interesting. Uh, yeah, this one is more just exploitative, and uh, of course we have the two incels are outside watching from the window. <laughs> Male gaze, if you will. Uh, fucking one of them is real excited about seeing titties. He's like acting like he came in his pants. <laughs> He's like, oh, oh wow, oh my god, well, we died and went to heaven. I don't know, man. That's that's probably what a teenage boy would do. I guess. I mean, I was a teenage boy once. I feel like. Uh, I mean, I don't ever. Uh, I had the presence of mind not to like creep on, <laughs> creep girls. on people. Yeah, so can't relate. We cut back to Valerie, and she's like, "Damn, where's Courtney at? She's upstairs getting wet." And I don't mean smoking PCP, <laughs> <laughs> but she could be doing that too. Uh, now we're back to Trish. Yucky snail. Ah. Ah. Neighbor creeps up. Ah. Oh, kill snail. He gets drilled, though. Well, he gets drilled the fuck out of the, his throat, it looks like. <laughs> Stop coughing. I feel like podcast, I can't help it. Sick person. <laughs> I got the colds. The, I feel like the drill, especially going through a person, is going to make way more noise than it, than it actually does in this movie. Yeah, why didn't they have, like, they, they should have done some Foley effects where they drilled some meat. <laughs> <Drilling the meat. laughs> two incel boys are sharing a single beer so they're gonna get fucked up <laughs> uh diane shows up she didn't lock uh the garage, the garage. so there's a lot that. of garage work that has to happen yeah there's a lot of revolving shit revolving around the garage i don't know it's locked it's not locked uh casio keyboard does some organ noises <laughs> so i was like well, wow it can do organs <gasps> and another garage. fake scare. Yeah, the garage stuff. Oh, it's Jeff. Oh, damn it, Jeff. Uh, we got punched. Oh. Yeah, and they can put hot dogs on him. Uh, the trash cans must get knocked over again because, oh, damn. damn. Garbage dogs, damn them. Close the garage. And the garage door becomes perilously close to the Some toes. Feet. I was like, watch them toes, baby. <laughs> Um, uh, Valerie, I'm trying to speed through it. We've been going forever, man. Yeah, we can't. This movie's only an hour and 15 minutes. We can't. I know. Fucking, all right, Valerie and Courtney, back to him. Um, I, at this point, I noticed that, like, Valerie, Courtney, the actresses are, like, totally the same age. It's yeah, just, I don't like, know. That's the one thing I wanted to ask you about. Like, Courtney I didn't look it up, but. just, like, playing young, you know, like, changing the pitch of her voice mm-hmm. and being like, oh, I'm a little kid, but really, it's like, you're, like, 23 or something. <laughs> you? <laughs> you have crow's feet. <laughs> Uh, they don't got steak. They got a hot dog. It, which I, I, I steak doesn't really work. Hot dogs definitely isn't not gonna work. I don't think any of that shit works. Right? You just put ice on it. Yeah, it's just a cold. And then also you wait. You're just gonna have a black guy and <laughs> wait it out. You have a real shiner there, Jimmy. A uh, ginger man gets killed. We see an artistic titty. <laughs> the artistic titty. That's and gonna be the name like of deep, uh, uh, contrast lighting and like close up angle shot. Of, like he's cupping it, and I was like. What is going on? <laughs> like, suddenly, this is not a French film I'm watching. I was like, well, suddenly this is like Lars von Trier. Or 
That's uh, that's gonna be the name of my uh, wine and cheese bar, the artistic titty. <laughs> the artistic titty. The artistic titty. Oh yes, yeah, so I gotta. Uh, I'm gonna meet Susan down at the artistic titty for a glass. Yeah, Diane says she's going out for beer with the ginger boy. Mmm, she's going out for that beer can. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean? Oh, and oh, surprise! It's the drill man, and he holds the drill right in front of his dick. Get it? <laughs> the, uh, I like how she goes on the garage. She's like, "All right, that that was hard, I guess, but it's over." <laughs> and his head pops off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, his head's gone. She gets killed. <laughs> and yeah, and then you're right. That's the first time, like, real, like, I'm holding it where my dick is. Look, get it? And then she gets it thrust into her. If Courtney and Valerie like just live across the street. I think they're next door. Oh. Something like that. The weird creep guy is one next door neighbor, and then Valerie's the other next door neighbor. Oh, well, something like that. Uh, they hear oh. Diane scream, and it's kind of like, Valerie's like, what was that? And Courtney's like, oh, I don't know, some honky screaming. <laughs> but they're like, whatever. They're not, not too concerned about it. <laughs> uh, this is where Pizza Man shows up. Yeah, and then fucking... Also, it's time to call the coach and ask about the fucking runs in the last, <laughs> yeah. last night's baseball game. <laughs> They like were having an argument uh, argument about it earlier, mm-hmm. and like now they're like, "Well, fucking, what is this?" <laughs> you can tell Kim likes sports because her nightgown is a uh, oversized jersey. Mm-hmm. Uh, USA basketball. Yeah, I guess so. It looked like the number on it was six six six, but then I forgot to pay attention to confirm what it I actually don't remember, was. So you... Sure, let's go with that. Yeah, uh, yeah, Pizza Man. He's uh, what's the damage? Six so far. Whoa. Because they're talking to the killer. Uh, and he murdered six people so mm-hmm. far. Uh, I didn't pizza- see if that was actually accurate, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. I, didn't so I think assume it is. Yeah, I don't know why he'd lie. Uh, pizza Man is uh, it's cool effect. He's got no eyeballs. He just kind of falls into the house. And he's like, whoa, Pizza Man. Oh, man, Pizza. Oh, man, Pizza. Does that mean we still owe you? I mean, probably not. Yeah, I don't think it's In fact, you could pizza. probably... Take whatever money he has. <laughs> pizza Man does not care more than twenty dollars. <laughs> that sign. Yeah, so they're gonna call for help, but the phone line gets cut. Snappo, cool, gone. This is the days before nine one one, so they call some emergency number. I assume like, uh, there's a killer on the loose. There's a killer on the road. <laughs> the person on the other end's like, oh, would you like to be transferred to the police? His brain is squirming like a toad. <laughs> I was having um a think about the doors the other day. Mm-hmm. A little hard think about them. Yeah, you know how they've go uh, over time they've kind of just turned into a joke. Mm-hmm. Like everyone makes fun of them. Um, some of it aptly deserved. Like Jim Morrison's lyrics or poetry, like not that good really, and <clears throat> their music was relatively simple. But I was thinking about it. They had like a really interesting they had a, style. They had a very specific sound. Yeah, and like the organ work with like surf, dirty surf guitar, mm-hmm. and like gothic, like goth beach party kind. Of, I don't know. And I was like, man, you know what? They had a big effect on a lot of different kinds of music. I think <laughs> so. Can't hate on Doors that much. And some of their songs, like you listen to it, and you're like, man, fucking, this is a good spookum song. <laughs> like Riders on the Storm. <laughs> I'm gonna listen to it all during Spooktober. Spooktober. Uh, this is where I realized he doesn't really look like Rami Malek. There's like a profile shot of him, and I'm like, oh, I guess not. Yeah, I guess he couldn't have played uh, Freddie Mercury. Uh, yeah, just... I wonder what his voice is like, though. He put fake teeth in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the two dudes are like, we yeah. gotta do something to save the girls. We like... gotta do something to save the girls. Maybe Should we run away? <laughs> <laughs> also, <laughs> it looks like they're about to kiss. <laughs> like after they have a discussion they like look really meaningfully into each other's He's like eyes. I just need to tell you something. I've always loved you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Well they're about to die, man. Yeah, so. like this is the last chance. This is the last dance. So I don't I don't I forget their names and I don't remember which one it is, but when they actually take off, one dies right away in the garage. Mm-hmm. The other one makes it to Valerie's house and like she's not answering the door. Uh and he sees the killer and he he keeps pounding on the door. So my question is, why not just keep running? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the odds are you're you're a young boy. This man has been in prison. He's carrying a power tool. You're going to outrun this motherfucker? But maybe, though. We saw earlier that he's pretty quick. He's a pretty quick drill <laughs> guy. Yeah. He's like... Instead, he decides to, like... He waits the last minute, and then he goes for the guy with a knife, and it doesn't work out for him. He dies a horrible death. 
They screeching like a little baby. They get like the one of the dudes gets like a bunch of good luck kisses from the girls. It doesn't help. <laughs> no, their kisses are not worth shit. Mm-mm. Jackie's kisses are though. Don't you ever talk bad about Jackie? You <laughs> son of a bitch. That's my wife. <laughs> um, let's see if she'll go with you to the the concert. Well, shit, I bet she's still looking pretty good. Uh, the Casio was working real hard. Once again, I can't bum, believe bum, bum, bum. there's such an interesting mix of sounds that they're getting it's coming out of this Casio. Yeah, I was like, wow, fucking! They must have been in there like changing the packets. And stuff. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta go get my other memory card. Oh uh, yeah, the, the one dude gets drilled right through the meat. Not as hard or anything, you know. It just looks like the meat. Well, yeah, because he's crawling away later on. Yeah. Uh, then yeah, Casio now is fucking doing horns. He's <laughs> like, wow, wow, wow. Uh, yeah, Wimpy Struggle Murder. Yeah, this is where one of the incels is getting murdered by the drill. And both of them look like fucking Wimpy Wimp Man. <laughs> They're just like, yeah. <laughs> and then they reveal he's like stashing all the bodies in the trunk. Yeah. There's so many For fucking, purpose? <laughs> so many fucking bodies in there. <laughs> and later on, he throws one in. He throws the pizza man down to the, the basement, right? And then mm. he puts the one lady in the refrigerator. Uh, he's Does he have a purpose? Or he's just like, I gotta stash these somewhere. Uh, yeah, I don't think he's like, <laughs> alright, we know he's killing everybody. So it's like he's hiding the bodies. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> he's like counting the bodies too in the trunk. He's like, one, two. He's three, gonna do four. something oh, with shit. them. One, two. Fuck! One of them, one's not quite dead. Um, This is the pizza time scene where Jackie's like, well, I'm gonna eat the pizza. And I was like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right, love. And then uh, one one of the dudes who is not dead yet, he's crawled back to the door. Mm-hmm. And they're like, "What if it's <laughs> banging on the door?" He's like, uh, "What if it's Dean <laughs> or something, uh, or Neil or Jeff?" Yeah. And they're like, "We can't open the door." No, could that could be the killer? Uh, help! Help! Oh, help. Well, that's the other thing too. Is why is he not cry for help until the killer's right on top of him? Yeah, or like say their names and stuff. Yeah. Well. Jackie, open the door, <laughs> damn it! I was like, yeah, just let him bleed. He's useless. <laughs> uh, I, I was at this point where I noticed the killer's got really weird tactics for using a drill. He does a lot of like, like slashing stuff, which is like that. It wouldn't work with the drill. <laughs> All evidence to the contrary, Kyle, because he's killed six people so far. Well, actually, he's got a, he's up to eight now. How did he also? How did he get the ginger guy's head off with the drill? He must have used like the hacksaw that was in the garage. Yeah, or something. He killed the knife a couple times, but. Killer's hiding in the bushes. <laughs> like they show him just like peeking out. <laughs> yeah, when Valerie rolls up. <laughs> yeah. Because Courtney, for some reason, is like, I gotta go check out this slumber party. I'm looking hot. Yeah, because she got her hair did. <laughs> and she's like, well, I gotta show this off. I mean, <laughs> that's just my only, my sister's gonna get to see this? I don't think so. You gotta understand, this is before Instagram and Twitter. So you, <laughs> you couldn't be like home alone and like showing off your hair. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Jackie gets killed. Wah, wah. Yeah, no, she's so trying you can, to rescue uh, Valerie. Yeah, she's like, "Fuck that shit." We can tell it's Valerie out here, and then that immediately makes Trish think that Valerie's in on it for some reason. Yeah, she's like, "Well, what if, uh, <laughs> what if Valerie's friends with the killer?" What I would think in the despite no like, evidence, <laughs> Valerie died. <laughs> she's yeah. out on the porch, fucking dead, because we didn't open the door <laughs> soon enough. Uh, yeah, it's at this point you can turn the movie off. Jackie's dead. <laughs> Um, the coach who was on the phone call with um with the girls when the the telephone wire gets cut now is uh is on the way over. She's she had called uh Valerie mm-hmm. right and like Valerie, why don't you go over and check it out? There might be a killer on loose. <laughs> yeah, go check it out. And she's like, oh, never mind. That's a bad idea. I guess I'll just go over there myself. Well, Valerie and Courtney, instead of calling the cops, Courtney and Valerie do go over there, but then they're like, well, nothing's going on here. Let's head on back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah, body fridge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, Courtney in... needed to steal one beer. Mm-hmm. I mean, you gotta... Come on, um, you and I can share. We'll get real fucked up. I've seen two boys do it. <laughs> yeah, share one beer. Get you twisted. Uh, yeah, Diane's in the fridge, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah cause... No, no, Diane's not in the fridge. Diane is in the trunk. It's the other one, the one with the, uh, the, first, uh, the basketball Kim? Oh, Kim. Well, that has not happened yet, though, because Kim's still alive. Because remember, they go around two or Oh, and we just skipped the part where Kim died. Yeah. Whatever. Well, I, I want to talk about it because uh, <laughs> what I was talking about before, like Trish like knocks him out kind of. Yeah. And then they're like, all right, well, now let's get out of here. And it takes him forever to move like the furniture and shit. And so, yeah, brain him with the ba- baseball yeah, bat when he's on the ground. it gets Kim killed. She gets killed with it. And like, 
It's real slow, too. <laughs> yeah. Like, she just turns around and he's like, stab. <laughs> it's uh, like slow. This is my most sexual of killings. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, this is like slow penetration. <laughs> kind of penetration you only save for your true love when you're listening to Frank Ocean. Slow, meaningful thrusts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's going to be our first t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> this is where I realized that the killer looks like Fred Armisen from Saturday Night Oh, Live shit. That's it. That's the entire time. I was like, yeah. I was like where's uh, Carrie Brownstein? <laughs> it does kind of look like him. Fred Armisen uh, melted as he got older. Well, that happens to many of us as we get older. Not Carrie Brownstein, though. She's looking good still. New Sleater Kenny album is good, too. So... Thanks, Carrie Brown. I guess that's all I have to say. She's cute. I'd take her on a date. Or rather, she'd probably take me on a date. She's got the power. She would, she's on, on top in the power. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so if you'd like to take Kyle on a date, as you know, we have, a, <laughs> so, uh, back, have an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Updated date watch. <laughs> Carrie Brownstein on the list. Well, I mean, yeah. So now they find Kim's body. Oh yeah, and they're gonna fucking use it. Trish right? is hiding in a um, in the closet inside of a dry cleaning bag. Mm-hmm. The killer replaces uh, himself. He moves the pizza man and then gets out of the blanket. Yeah, for an old, like, a nice surprise. <laughs> He's gonna surprise. Valerie is downstairs in the basement, right? Mm-hmm. She gets She's like circular saw, <laughs> and then starts running with it. And then obviously the we watch the extension cord unravel. And then <laughs> Snap back! <laughs> it's like, man, that is like such a risky weapon. Anyways, like, why wouldn't you just grab like? Compared to it, you have no reach with that thing. Yeah, just get like a fucking long stick or a bat or you know what I mean, like something that has yeah. range on him and beat the shit out of him. Uh, Courtney's like hiding under the couch and she watched the killer hide, replace the pizza man. Yeah, so she's on to his his tricks. Killer thinks he's slick, but he's not so slick. I mean, what does he expect? He's like, okay, okay like, I'm coming to this room, and then I'll surprise them. Because they're not going to pull the blanket <laughs> off the pizza yeah. dude. Uh, and then I'll trip them. <laughs> <laughs> the old trip Yeah, so um, he does reveal himself to the coach. And it's like, oh, fuck. Oh, what? Well, Corny trips him, though. Yeah. Well, the coach and him fight with, like, a... She's got, like, a you know, poker for the... Mm-hmm. So and then Trish comes out of fucking nowhere and stabs him in the kidney. Well, the thing is, so the uh, coach like takes him down, and at that point, my note says, "Be his ass, stab her, ass, stab his ass, murder, murder, kill." Because <laughs> <laughs> like he's trying, been trying to kill you guys all night. Just fucking kill him. Yeah. Well, I guess the coach doesn't know that. Yeah. She just sees Trish running over, stab a guy in the kidney. She's like, <laughs> "No, don't do it." Yeah, Trish straight up stabs him. She, I mean, really, she should have stabbed him again. Yeah. Because she stops and looks at the knife, and she really just sort of kept going crazy. Prison style. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, just quick shoes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but nah, uh, he, um, in my notes here, it says, uh, drill, drills don't really work that way. Because he, like, just, like, slashes the belly of the coach and yeah. rips her open. Yeah, she might actually be alive after that. We don't know. I mean, if it was real life, it would have, like, scratched her a little bit, maybe. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's not not how really, she has a really deep scratch on her tummy. <laughs> it's not how fucking drills work, <laughs> god damn it. Uh, this is where we get the predatory masculinity reveal, where he's like, I love you guys. Don't You're you so love beautiful. Me? You're so beautiful. Come Please, on. I never heard of you. Uh, what it reminded me of, though, is just see all dudes on the internet who send unsolicited dick pics or <laughs> like thirsty DMs on Twitter and stuff. Come, come on. I was, you know, I'm a nice guy. You know, I just murder, murder, kill women. <laughs> you know, they look at my dick. I love you. Uh yeah, so that was pretty good. I like that. That's, thank you, Rita Mae Brown. That's some real good feminism, I think, right there. Because <laughs> it is just a over overarching the commentary on predatory like men. Yeah, I mean that the problem though is like legitimately this is serial killers think this way. Oh yeah, uh huh. I mean not all of them. Some of them, though. well, uh, we don't have to get into the pathos of different. Yeah, but killers. I mean so, yeah. A fair was, number. We'll save that for the next episode <laughs> when Kyle goes over his top five favorite serial killers. <laughs> Uh, fucking Valerie's had enough though. She's got a machete now, mm-hmm. which is fucking awesome. Machete is the perfect weapon. Mm-hmm. It's long, it's sharp. You can use it to it's um, open coconuts, cut mangoes. 
Um, clear paths and jungles. Yeah, and tear up serial killers. And she does. I like it. I, they, I like how gruesome it is, too. She's like chopping off fingers, the whole hand, chopping him in the chest. His penis. She cuts his penis right um, in half. Yeah, she, his drill penis. Uh, yeah, my notes say castrated. <laughs> her machete is strong. It kills the drill. <laughs> my, uh, my notes are she got him. She got him right in the penis. He was hurt. He was hurt bad. <laughs> he was hurt bad. <laughs> Uh, he falls into the pool and gets it real dirty with blood, and you're like, "Oof, what a relief!" That pool's not coming clean. <laughs> yeah, surprise! He's not actually dead though. He yep. jumps back out. They struggle. He's slapping people around. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trish tries to stab him again, but this time he's the one that gets penetrated, and it's real terrifying and shocking to everyone involved. Not Courtney though. You see when they cut to Courtney, she's <gasps> like Ooh. stone cold, like Ooh, fucking Wendy O. Williams. <laughs> Yeah, that's the end of the movie, right? That, that is it. It really is. They kill him, and then like, all right, bye. <laughs> that's all you need. What else you didn't talk about? You got him, fucking dead. Uh, when he's comes out of the pool, though, or I mean, like that, he his hands gone. He's bleeding to death. You know yeah, what I mean? like you wouldn't be like. Maybe, I don't know if maybe a surge of adrenaline would get you going for a little bit. But There's also a part where he like, like picks oh, up a head of steam. Oh. And he starts running and tackles Valerie, and I just don't see how he had any room. Between like when he got out of the pool to Valerie to do that little running jump thing, yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, everyone makes mistakes directing a film. <laughs> no big deal. Was there? Did uh? Did our friend Amy go on to direct any of the movies? Um, I she did, so but like me. not anything that really stands out. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, she did a lot more editing though. Ah, what are we watching next? Next week we are watching Possession. Mm. I told you this is it. It's spooky season. We're only watching the spooks now. Possession starring Sam Neill <gasps> Jurassic Park fame. Very young in it because it's like 1981. I think you mean Sam Neill of Event Horizon fame. Event Horizon. I guess there might be some connective tissue between this film and Event Horizon. They both deal with Possession. Yeah, the Satan horrors from beyond. <laughs> Whoa, horrors from the demon dimension. Yep. Yeah. All right, uh, that's it. Fucking McVeggieProductions dot com at a Sean McDonald at Kyle Main at um, VHS Cole on Instagram. I think it's at right. <laughs> I don't know. Fuck it. I don't know. I don't know how fucking social media works. Thanks for listening and being a member of my cult. Don't thank them. It's just a thank you for being the leader. Jesus, you're the worst cult leader. No, it's the positive space. We, um, we're polite. I'm going to go sack out in the swamp. We're polite in this cult. <laughs> <laughs> uh, polite in this cult. Please, anybody go. Please. Yeah, that's it, I guess. We can see you next week.